As trainer Nick Zito once said, you can't even lose if you don't enter. Todd Pletcher knows about that. He's raced 31 horses in the Kentucky Derby, and only once with Super Saver in 2010 did he finish first. He'll try for a second with five horses, a quarter of the field coming from his barn, tying a record he already shared with Zito and Dwayne Lucas. The way I look at it is we have more chances. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily give you a better chance to win, if that makes sense. There's no prize for having the most starters, but getting in the race at all is improbable. The 20 who'll run come from a crop of 27,000 foals born in this country in 2010. They get one opportunity in their lifetime to run in this race, and you know they have to be healthy and in good condition and perform well up to this point. So there's a lot you know that can that can go wrong prior to this, and you know we've been fortunate that we've had five of them that a lot of things have gone right for. And it will be Verrazano onto the Derby. The man who shoes Pletcher's horses is impressed. I worked for so many top trainers all my life, and and, and in all due respect to all of them, uh, many of them wound up in the Hall of Fame and all, but. Todd Pletcher is just, uh, he's really a step above. He's, he just, he's the kind of guy that comes around like once every 30, 40 years. Trainer Doug O'Neill won here last year with All Have Another. He'll try this year with Golden Sense, but he's having feelings of inadequacy. It's amazing. Yeah, that's a, a credit to him, and and, uh, and actually it, it uh, makes the rest of the trainers look like real idiots. Right now you have your back to your horse. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Key right training right method, though. All the all. legendary trainers have done that. Oh, my, are you kidding me? Pletcher could turn his back on one of his horses and likely see another. He has a litter in the Kentucky Derby. No other stable comes close. How would you do it in, in a... It'll never happen, of course, for you, but let's say I'll you did around, have five. Yeah. How would it happen? <laughs> well, if I'm hanging around you, it probably ain't going to happen. Uh, now, it would probably, uh, wow, it, it would, uh, they'd probably have to expand the field of 50, <laughs> and I may have a good chance of getting five in, so uh, I'm voting for that. Pletcher has five horses to tend to and five ownership groups to make feel equally special. Those are good problems to have. It's like 12 players on a basketball team. You know, you want to make sure that you don't coach different guys different ways because players will sense that. You, they want you to be consistent. And I think that's the great thing about Todd. He's really consistent. Five jockeys will receive instructions from Pletcher, but he believes nothing will be said to one that ends up being detrimental to another. We have horses that have complementary running styles. Verrazano will be prompting the pace. Revolutionary will, will be way back, as will probably Charming Kitten. And I think overanalyzing Palace Mal is sort of in the middle. You know, honestly, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be shocked if, you know, if any of them got up and won. And he probably wouldn't be surprised if none did. It is the Kentucky Derby. And while he's made a preposterous feat seem unsurprising, a record for trying to win will mean little if he doesn't. It's an accomplishment to get five here in some ways, mainly because you know we have the winner of the Wood Memorial, and we have the winner of the Arkansas Derby, and we have the winner of the Louisiana Derby. Those are significant races in their own right. That's an accomplishment. Just to get them into the race doesn't mean anything to me. It's all about the result of the race.